So, game critics are very strange people, kind of like how film and music critics are, except game critics are way weirder when you think about it, because how intelligent they sound, but how dumb their words are is a big thing to pay attention to. Most of the time I watch a game critic such as my past 2017 self, and I think that I hear him say something along the lines of, Oh yeah, the story is terrible, multiplayer is completely broken, characters get just no development whatsoever, and the atmosphere is sucky and trash, but it's fun and I wrestled to Jimmy playing it, so I like it 10 out of 10. It's funny when you think about it. What's the difference between a pro reviewer like the Act Man or someone like, oh, I don't know, t Martin? Well, t Martin gets paid to praise an annual Call of Duty game every year, so it's pretty funny now that I think about it. So the thing about multiple reviewer groups like IGN or GameSpot versus one person reviewers like like Angry Joe, Actman, Video Game Donkey, or Angry Video Game Nerd, or even myself, is you know who's exact who's exactly you know exactly whose point of view it's coming from. Then you pick a group from like IGN, GameSpot, or PC Gamer, and you can never tell you can never tell who's saying what. It's it's like. You can never exactly tell who's saying what, or how their opinions are connected to one each other, especially when a lot of the time, their opinions actually differentiate. The channels like IGN have so many reviewers that you can lose track of who's talking, and this is especially bad when you realize most likely people all have different opinions about this or that. Take, for example, when IGN reviewed a game like, say, I don't know, Sonic Generations, they gave it an 8.5 saying it was really good. And then finally tap in, and then and it finally taps into the good stuff with Sonic. And then you have the four fuckos from Game Scoop on IGN who say the whole franchise sucks. In fact, I'm pretty sure one of those guys. I'm pretty sure that one of those guys on that episode of Game Scoop is the same person who covered Sonic Generations. I could be wrong, but this is just a wide assumption. Like like I said, IGN has so many reviewers that it's hard to keep track. When you put up a review of Sonic Generations and give it an 8.5, and then say the whole Sonic franchise was never even good to begin with, which one is it? It's a very similar issue with groups like GameSpot or Kotaku, or... Yeah, it's an issue I've had with consistently with these companies. So I see that some critics actually put up their reviews before e they even finish the damn game. That's sickening. I get, like, I get that some games like Dark Souls or Cuphead are pretty hard, so some people are actually incapable of completing them at all. But show some dignity. The review from GameSpot for the very popular game, Super Mario Bros. Wii, the guy calls it a really tough game, but if you look closely, he didn't even complete it. He only got halfway through the thing, and then put his review up. That's about all I have to say there. Then you have the people who are like, oh, yeah, you know, uh, yeah, the game, the game sucks, and it, it, it's really generic and boring, and then they give it a 9.1. That's, it's like, make your, make your words align with your verdict, please. I know that's hard for me to do t sometimes, but I'm pretty sure professional reviewers can do it better than I can. Oh, wait, they can't, because IGN... <sighs> you, you, you can't spell ignorant without IGN. So, yeah. That's all I really had to say about this video. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time. So, just an additional bit to this video. I also, um, I'm close to 50 subscribers. I know, we're getting close. So... Um, I have a special video planned for then, so stay tuned for when we hit fifth for when this channel hits 50 subscribers. Because I have something special planned for when that happens. Stay tuned, guys.